all over the world, September has been a really hot month. As data confirms, September broke another global record. An increase that one climate scientist describes as absolutely gobsmackingly bananas. So that's a pretty specific description, and you might have heard it already, but what exactly equals gobsmackingly bananas hot, and what does it mean for the future? I feel like this chart kind of says it all. It shows in degrees Celsius how each September compares to the global average air temperature. And the bars, they show you how far off each year was from that average. And that last line, right there on the right, that tallest line, that's last month. And what we can see is that it was way above average, about 0.93 degrees, almost a full degree warmer. You know, when climate, climate scientists talk about, uh, you know, change in temperatures, whatever, it's usually these fractions of a degree. It's not fractions of a degree anymore. One degree is massive. And if you look at that line again and compare it to just last year alone, it's half a degree higher. So. How does this even happen? Well, take a look at this data gathered by climate scientists. This is the air temperature for the last 80 plus years, averaged by month. And we've been talking a lot about September, but you can see here that bright red line that runs across the top of the wave. And this year has been hot all across the board, but especially over the last four months. We had a record breaking summer this year with the warmest June, the warmest July, the warmest August on record. Now we have the warmest September on record. One of the reasons for this trend can be summed up in two words, El Nino. The UN's weather agency has officially declared an El Nino. A lot of things on earth are cyclical, right? So when we think about El Nino, it's part of this years long pattern of warm and cold affecting the Pacific Ocean and the entire world, and El Nino, that's the warm part. Usually we see the Pacific winds near the equator blowing east to west, and that affects the water because the warmer stuff, the stuff that's on the surface where the sun is shining, it gets pushed along and it creates this churn in the ocean that pulls cold water up from down deep below, and that flows up to the top. But during El Nino, those winds that are blowing east to west, they, they die down. And so that warm water that's along the surface, it stays on the surface, cooking in the sun, and you don't get that churn of cold water. So when the warm surface water stays there, well, it makes everything else warm around it. Warm water makes for warmer air, and then the hot, moist air rises and makes rain and storms and flooding, and it all just becomes a mess. So the thing to remember in this is that it's not like a light switch, right? You can't just switch it on and off. The temperature in the ocean has been rising for months, which means that the impacts that we're gonna see from this warming water is just beginning. What's happening is these hot months, they are the norm and it's unfortunate. And on top of which, this warmth that we're seeing is coming at a time when El Nino just started. So moving ahead, they are predicting that we have almost certainty, like 90% chance of El Nino continuing on into the winter months. And the Pacific isn't the only warm ocean this year. According to one climate scientist at NASA, quote, over the long term, we're seeing more heat and warmer sea surface temperatures pretty much everywhere. Take a look at this data from NASA's Earth Observatory. Their headline is, the ocean has a fever. And that map shows sea surface temperatures and they're really high. In late August, many areas were more than three degrees warmer than normal. What's driving it? Ocean temperatures, which started rising early spring, have stayed warm. You have to consider, you know, somebody once said, how do you feel when your temperature goes up, right? Pretty rotten. And that's exactly what's happening here. And it's not without its consequences, of course. There are always a lot of complicated factors that lead to natural weather disasters and the havoc that they bring. We've been seeing these, these weather phenomena that have the fingerprints of climate change on them. It doesn't mean that every severe weather event is linked to climate change, but what we're seeing this summer's unprecedented wildfire season, flooding elsewhere, and with climate change, with a continue to pump carbon dioxide and carbon, uh, you know, CO2 into the atmosphere, it is going to continue to warm. And that is what we're gonna see more of these natural disasters phenomenon. More extreme weather, more often, with more deadly consequences. 
extreme flooding in Libya, wildfires in Canada, and an earthquake in Morocco. All of these over the span of just one month. Thousands of people impacted, entire communities gone, lives lost or turned upside down. Colossal, the only word to describe the damage wrought by the floodwaters or the grief left in their wake. Climate scientists say that this string of record-breaking months in what's on track to be a record-breaking year can't be ignored. The concern is that 2024 could just, again, be another record hot year. And to put things into perspective, you know, nine of the past hottest years have been all in a row. And as the UN Secretary General said in July, when we crossed the 1.5 degree global warming point, there's no more room for complacency. The era of global warming has ended. The era, the era of global boiling has arrived. Whether we hear it described like that or as gobsmackingly bananas, what's undeniable is that our climate is changing, often for the worse. And it's happening faster and faster.